Hello friends, welcome to another day of Q&A's, joined by my lovely and helpful wife Lucy. Hi guys. Lucy will be asking me one of your questions from Instagram. Alright, next question is by Andy Pietro 4040 What are your thoughts on MK677 for muscle building and fat burning? No, you're not a big fan of growth hormone, but what is your honest opinion on it for builder building and athletic performance? Better than 2-3 IU of former great growth hormone? Thank you, Lucy and Leo, for amazing content. And we also had uh, Andrea uh, D'Angelo98 that asked about MK677. Thank you, Lucy. All right, so I guess it's time to finally talk about MK677. Lucy, you don't know about this uh, no. compound. It's a compound <laughs> that people ask about all the time. They talk about it a lot, and they're very interested in it. And clients ask me about it often. I never made a video on it, so we're finally going to talk about this. So. First of all, I want to tell you guys a little bit of history about it before I talk about how it works biologically and then I'll talk to you about my opinions on it and I'll answer the question specifically. So if you want to skip certain parts, you can skip through the video, you know where everything will be. So first of all, historically, this stuff was discovered in, in the late 1970s. What happened was this, scientists were researching natural opioids. Natural opioids are molecules, like they're called endorphins actually. They're molecules that agonize the opioid receptors in the brain naturally. They were creating synthetic versions of them and they came across one that for some reason caused growth hormone to be released in mice. Or in, I'm not sure if it was mice, but in rodents. Mm -hmm. So they were surprised by this. This was I think 1977, sometime in the late 70s. By the mid 1980s, and they didn't know how this was happening, by the way. What they did know was that as long as the, the rodent had a pituitary, this would happen. If the mm -hmm. pituitary was gone, this would not happen. Okay. Um, so in the mid-1980s, they discovered uh, the famous growth hormone secretagogue called GHRP6. Uh, uh, it was in, in 1984, I think. GHRP6 is still commonly used by bodybuilders and people interested in this subject. In the uh, late, maybe early 90s, they discovered GHRP2, which is also still commonly used. Now, the issue between GHRP2 and GHRP6, and I'll talk about the mechanisms later, but the issue with them was they have a very short half-life. There's also hexarelin. By the way, all of these guys, they have all of these compounds, their actual name ends with ellen. Mm -hmm. So, MK677 is something called iputamorelin, something like that. They all end with ellen, but I'm using the terms that bodybuilders use commonly. So GHRP6 and GHRP2 both had very short half-lives, uh, between like 30 minutes to 40 minutes, something like that. So they didn't last long enough in the body to cause tremendous differences in growth unless you inject repeatedly all the time. Um, although they were studied in people, so hexarelin, for example, was studied uh, by a very famous researcher called Laron. Mm. Laron is very famous because the Laron dwarfs of South America are named after him. And he's the, the Laron dwarfs have been studied extensively by longevity researchers to understand why they live such a long time. Yeah. Because they have a, a remember them? Yeah. Mm -hmm. So Laron himself was actually studying hexarelin. And he showed that with administration every three hours or so, um, actually it was nasal, intranasal administration every three hours or so, uh, children could grow faster and they got bigger and stuff like that. So, but the problem is the half-life is very short and it's not bio, bio, uh, bio, uh, orally bioavailable. I don't know why that was hard for me to say, but it's not orally bioavailable. So, uh, in the later date, I don't remember when exactly, Merck, the huge pharmaceutical giant came up with uh, one compound first. It was also called MK something something. And then they came up with MK677 shortly thereafter, improving upon the former compound. MK677 is over 60% bio orally bioavailable and lasts for uh, a half-life of around six hours in the body, which okay. is, or between four and a half to six hours. I'm not sure exactly. Depends on, on the animal. But uh, basically, it's uh, it's very uh, it stays a long time in the body, solves a lot of the problems. You can just take a pill, and now you have this effect. Now, bef so I just want to tell you guys something really interesting about these compounds because people don't really uh, bodybuilders don't commonly know what they are. They so normally in the body, what happens is you have a hormone uh, called growth hormone releasing hormone that is released by the hypothalamus in the brain. Mm -hmm. This reaches the pituitary. There is mm -hmm. a growth hormone releasing hormone receptor in the in the pituitary. Okay. It senses growth hormone releasing hormone and then releases growth hormone. 
okay? okay? The feedback, negative feedback to this is something called somatostatin and IGF-1. When somatostatin and IGF-1 increase, the, the hypothalamus stops producing gonadotropin releasing hormone. So it decreases. Decrease. So in the body, unless you have a tumor, that's how a person's growth hormone reduces and they don't just keep growing into a giant under a normal stage. There's also a long-term effect with estrogen. If you have higher estrogen levels, this is why usually fatter people and child and adolescents are shorter and women are shorter than men because of estrogen, but that's a different story. Now, with these drugs, what happens is not something involving the gonadotropin-releasing hormone, but still involving the pituitary. It turns out, and this was confirmed, I think, in uh, 1996, maybe. It was it's confirmed that there's a receptor in the pituitary called the... They called it... Because at the time, they didn't know about another hormone, which I'll mention in a second. They called it the growth hormone uh, secretagogue receptor, uh, I, which is G, uh, GSR. And specifically, that receptor, uh, the subtype 1A, is what, is what these compounds are working on. Okay. So it's a growth hormone secretagogue. It bypasses the growth hormone releasing hormone. Mm. So originally, studies used to think that if the IGF-1 goes up, or the somatostatin goes up, which is actually found in the study. Somatostatin does go up when people take GHRP6 and GHRP2 and, and uh, MK677. They thought that this would cause a negative feedback, but it doesn't because it's a completely different receptor that's causing this to happen. I see. Now, the fascinating thing is that in 1999, Japanese researchers discovered a compound called ghrelin, which you've mm. probably heard about before, the hunger yeah. hormone. Oh, yeah. Ghrelin, which is named after the Proto-Indo-European word gra, or not word, but syllable, gra, which is supposed to mean the origin of the, word, uh, the English word grow, and supposed to mean grow across the Proto-Indo-European languages. By the way, guys, the Proto-Indo-European languages are the languages that include um, Indian, uh, Northern Indian languages, mm -hmm. uh, Farsi, uh, which is why Iran is called uh, Iran, because it's from the word Aryan. So the Proto-Indo-European is like the Aryan languages. Anyway. They had a root for many words, gra. So they named this compound ghrelin. Mm. Ghrelin is a natural compound that agonizes that growth hormone secretagogue receptor, mm -hmm. 1A in this case. In fact, the growth hormone secretagogue receptor should have been called the ghrelin receptor. But as often happens in biology, sometimes, for example, the GABA receptors in the brain are called the benzodiazepine receptors. Mm -hmm. Because people are, before, sometimes before the natural compound that agonizes the receptor is discovered, the receptor is learnt about through the pharmacologic study. Of I see. So, what's the takeaway from this? The takeaway is that these uh, growth hormone secretagogues, which is what they're called in general, cause growth hormone release, but not through the normal growth hormone receptor, uh, growth hormone releasing hormone receptor in the pituitary. They go through the ghrelin receptor, the hunger hormone receptor. I see. Now, ghrelin is an interesting compound because it is profoundly neuroprotective. It protects against, you know, an Alzheimer's disease, there's something called amyloid plaques. It, it protects against amyloid plaque and induced toxicity. It protects against uh, lipopolysaccharide uh, inflammatory uh, results in the microglia. The microglia are the primary inflammatory um, uh, inflammatory components of the nervous system and lipopolysaccharides are what are produced by our microbiome that sometimes affect our mm -hmm. um, cognition and stuff like that. It protect the ghrelin is, is very neuroprotective and also stimulates uh, neuronal uh, proliferation all kinds of things like that. On the other hand, leptin, the, the, the being full hormone mm -hmm. or the, whatever the opposite of that is, uh, is actually seems to be neurotoxic slightly. So ghrelin, ghrelin has favorable effects in the body, but unlike growth hormone, ghrelin is not, does not cause, li cause lipolysis, which is fat to burning. It causes the opposite because it signals to the body that you're hungry, causing the body mm. to, to become anabolic and want to store. So it causes actually fat storage in the liver. It causes more glucose use than, flat, than fat burning. That's why fasting a long time is important because you pass the two days of having a lot of ghrelin. Oh, that's that could be true as well. I have never thought about that, but that could be true. Uh, but um, very interesting point. But the point is that that ghrelin is very. And why I'm saying this is because he mentioned fat loss, and mm -hmm. this is not the same thing. You're getting growth hormone out, and growth hormone does cause lipolysis, fat reduction in the body, fat burning, but. Ghrelin does not, and ghrelin basically works through the same way, through this receptor that the growth hormone secretagogues work through. So that's why all of the studies on MK677 show fat increases. 
not reduction. I don't know why bodybuilders think that it causes fat reduction. I mean, obviously the growth hormone part, mm -hmm. but none of the studies show that. None. And there are, the problem with MK677 and the other studies is that the other secretagogues, GHRP6 and GHRP2 and hexamorelin, is that they're generally studied for very short periods, like maximum of 12 weeks. However, there is one study uh, in humans. There are three studies in humans of MK677, some in children, some in sickly adults, uh, sickly elderly people, some in uh, healthy elderly people. And one of them is a two-year study in healthy elderly, really elderly people. Okay. And these studies overall show fat increase, show that the MK677 increases growth hormone by consistently 1.8 times, 1.8x. So an 80% increase mm -hmm. over, over the baseline. And increases IGF-1 by 50%, 1.5x. However, uh, in the two-year study, you can see after six months, a slight decrease in the uh, growth hormone. But not that much, which is weird because there's an earlier study that was for 12 weeks that showed that after a short period of time, the growth hormone would uh, reduce back again. So I don't know how to account for this, but the, I trust the longer study, which is more comprehensive. It seems to cause a long-lasting increase in growth hormone, a long-lasting increase in IGF-1. Um, with that said, it certainly causes insulin uh, issues with, uh, basically, it causes the onset of mild uh, insulin uh, insensitivity or, or, or type 2 diabetes. So they, there's a consistent worsening of oral glucose tolerance tests, which is the best way to know if you have uh, the beginnings of, of uh, type 2 diabetes. Mm -hmm. It causes a worsening of blood, blood glucose levels in the short term, as well as in the HT21A uh, or whatever, 21C, the long-term test, three-month uh, uh, blood test. It, um, and so basically, it worsens your insulin sensitivity for sure. And this happens in general when IGF-1 raises, because IGF-1 affects the insulin the response in the body. And also, MK677 increases the insulin production directly. Mm -hmm. uh, so it causes problems with that. It also causes increases in cortisol, a basal cortisol level that is minor but sustained. Now, in the studies with elderly people, which is the only long-term studies, mm -hmm. it does cause an increase in fat, but it causes an increase in muscle also. But overall, this is, it's significant, but it's negligible. It's like two pounds. Now, there are elderly people, keep in mind, they're not weightlifting, and they're not using steroids. So maybe the effect is minor because of that reason, but it is very minor. Sorry, guys, our camera stopped functioning for a second. So we'll continue. I was mentioning that when he said that, um, is it comparable to growth hormone two to three units mm -hmm. a day? Two to three units of growth hormone will increase your growth hormone as well as your IGF-1 way more than 1.8 times or 1.5 times. Okay. And keep in mind that it's likely that MK677 raises the growth hormone in elderly people more than it does in younger people. Although, actually, now that I think about it, the studies on, on children show a similar increase. So maybe I'm wrong. But the, but the point is, it's, it's a, a serious difference from two to three units I'm of growth. Yeah. It's much less, you know. So... Another thing I want to mention is that in the in the two year study, hunger in most of the, well maybe not most but I, at least thirty percent of the participants, I'm not sure if it's thirty percent but a, a large portion of the participants, their hunger increase because there's a hunger increase that comes with MK six seven seven that's because of this ghrelin. Oh, it's it's agonizing the ghrelin. It's acting like ghrelin. So the hunger increase decreases for most people after three months and the rest it tapers down for the remaining year and then mm -hmm. goes back to baseline. So it doesn't cause a sustained hunger increase. Just the first three months. Yeah, just the first three months or so in these people. And despite that, they are still fatter a year and a half later. So, so is there any benefits for bodybuilders uh, to take MK677? I don't think so. Oh. So so I believe that growth... So this... Okay, let's talk about my opinion. I always advise clients and everyone else not to use MK677. I advise them not to use it more than I advise them not to use growth hormone. And the reason why is that the the effect on on IGF one from what I can tell from all the studies is somewhat negligible. A fifty percent increase of IGF one could be done just by increasing your protein content in your food, and it's not going to have a dramatic Im influence on your um, on your weightlifting and all these other kind of things. Increasing IGF one maybe even through your food may cause slight insulin resistance. I don't know. Maybe they'll both cause insulin resistance. But my issue with MK six seven seven is that it is long acting. Mostly bodybuilders, by the way, I didn't mention the dose, but in all of, almost all of the adult studies and even the children's studies, they use 
25 milligrams of MK677. Once Most, a day? Once a day, before bed usually. Oh, one benefit of MK677, it really improves sleep. Much more than GHRP2 and GHRP6. It improves both REM and non-REM sleep, especially in the elderly, but even in younger people, it improves REM sleep. Mm -hmm. But uh, I have a feeling that this improvement would reduce if it's done on the long, in a long-term basis. But the reason for it over the other ones is because it's longer acting. So if I was to use MK677, I would use it right before bed because you'd get that improvement in sleep, which could have an effect on your recovery and all other kinds of things. Unlike most other sleep improving drugs, this actually does improve sleep. Mm -hmm. It improves REM and non-REM. It doesn't take you out of REM and stuff like that, which, you know, all the other sleep drugs do, almost all of them. So it does have those benefits, but basically the reason I'm against it is it's very long acting. So if you take it twice a day, you have this all day in you. You get insulin resistant. Mm -hmm. And you're not getting as much benefit, in my opinion, as if you're taking something that really, if for bodybuilding, you're not getting as much benefit as something that's really raised, raising your IGF-1 and your growth hormone a significant amount, which lasts a shorter amount of time if you inject it. So in my opinion, if somebody is using this, but the other reason they use this drug is because they want to get hungry. Bodybuilders sometimes want to eat more. Mm, I see. That's why I advise people who want to eat more, this is not medical advice, but I think that if I was in their position, I would use GHRP6 or GHRP2, mainly GHRP6, because you can get hungry right when you need it, and you will desensitize less to it, because the, you won't have that ghrelin effect all day. Remember, don't think of this as growth hormone, this is ghrelin, and ghrelin causes growth hormone release, and you're using a ghrelin mimetic. It's not a growth hormone secretagogue, it's a ghrelin mimetic. So you're making it, now ghrelin does have neuroprotective effects. So it's interesting to me in that sense. But I think that there are some studies that show that this neuroprotective effect doesn't remain in the long term, but I'm not sure. But it may be interesting to use it in the short term. So for example, if someone's fasting, where they don't have to worry too much about the effects of eating on their insulin sensitivity and all of that, that might be a good time to use it. But then again, you would get hungry. So I don't yeah. know. I don't know. That's the first two days of fasting are the worst. <laughs> exactly. So I don't, I don't really... Personally, I think that it's sort of a useless drug. I can't really... Except for sleep, maybe. But otherwise, the insulin effect is, is bothersome, yeah. trou troubling to me. And, and obviously, he said, I, I generally uh, I don't have a favorable effect toward growth hormone and IGF-1. The reason for that is because growth hormone... Um, you know, growth hormone levels and IGF-1 levels are very much correlated to cancer tumor development yeah. in the body. And growth hormone deficiencies cause, basically, in the case of the Laurent dwarfs, they don't get cancer. Mm -hmm. they, they have a growth hormone deficiency. They don't get cancer at all. They live extremely long lives. They, despite being obese, because growth hormone is, causes fat burning, yeah. so they're obese, they don't get type 2 diabetes either because of the same effect of the growth hormone. So they're immune from type 2 diabetes, immune from cancer, they live a very long time, they die usually accidental deaths, or sometimes from cardiovascular disease, but yeah. not from... So it's very protective to have a low growth hormone levels, especially as an adult. Now, IGF-1 and growth hormone are both independently protective of the brain. They both... IGF-1 has a unique element, which is that it, uh, it increases the development of uh, oligodendrocytes, which increase the myelin uh, producing. Of, uh, these are myelin are sheaths that cover axons in the brain. And growth hormone also has a neuroprotective effect. Mm -hmm. So does IGF-1 and both increase neurogenesis. So there are effects on the brain, but I don't think that they're worth the risk with cancer and things like that. So personally, I wouldn't take them. But it is attractive that this thing can help someone sleep. But if someone's doing it for appetites, I would only use GHRP6 and GHRP2. That's short release. Although it'll make you insulin resistant in the short term, but probably won't do much in the long term. Yeah. And we'll, and But again, force feeding, I really don't think is healthy. I really don't think so. It, I force fed a lot in my lifetime. I was never a bodybuilder, but I was trying to be as strong as I could be many times in my life. And I force fed so much. And as Lucy knows, I have an incredible uh, ability to eat food now. I could be a competitive eater on it. If I wanted a lot of views, I should have a competitive eating channel. I could do. I could eat an endless amount of food. And this doesn't really recover when you get older. Your stomach does shrink, but not that much. And it can quick, quickly grow again. But more than that, it causes your abdomen to be larger than it would be otherwise. Because your stomach actually grew that much. Mm -hmm. And maybe your intestines even grow. I don't think it's a good thing to do in general. You can eat calorie-dense foods. Instead, like you can eat a lot of oils and, and basically fats. 
Yeah. And and you won't have to eat as much. So anyway, that's my talk on MK677. I don't think it's a valuable molecule, despite its neuroprotective effects, which you guys know I'm very interested in. I don't think it's valuable. And think of it as a ghrelin mimetic, not a growth hormone secreted drug. That's, that's okay. what we should. All right, thank you guys for listening. We'll see you next time.